Yesterday's Prophecies for Today's World. Just remember that this is a time when we all have to be bold and share the simple gospel of Jesus Christ with people. And now, Hal Lindsey presents the Bible Prophecy Series, The Coming of the Last World Superpower. Now, turn to Revelation chapter 13. And the dragon stood on the sand of the seashore. And then I saw a beast come out of the sea, having ten horns and seven heads. And on his horns were ten diadems, and on his head were blasphemous names. All right, now, quickly, some of you have been here with me when I taught the book of Revelation. You know from that that, uh, like in uh, Daniel chapter 2, it predicts the coming of the you know, the, the, the world's superpowers, God, God's superpowers, that one, that was the Babylon, Media, Persia, Greece, Rome, phase one, Rome, phase two. Rome, phase two are the ten toes of that image that uh, Nebuchadnezzar saw and Daniel interpreted for him. Well, this symbol is about the same power, the ten horns here. It's about ten nations that will come out of the Roman culture and people, and that it will be the final uh, coalition of power that will be the last world superpower. Then in verse 2 it says, And the beast which I saw was like a leopard, and his feet were like those of a bear, and his mouth like the mouth of a lion, and the dragon gave him his power, his throne, and great authority. All right. So what this shows here is that uh, the leopard, the bear, the lion, the dragon, these are all symbols that are used in Daniel chapter 7 to talk about the same progression of these successive world powers that God allows to come and rule the world. Now, in verse 3 it says, I saw one of his heads as if it had been slain and his fatal wound was healed. And the whole earth was amazed and followed after the beast. You know, the the confusing thing to most people about this, it talks about the beast, and in some sentences it sounds like it's talking about a kingdom. The beast is a kingdom. And then in other places it's talking about the ruler of that kingdom because it goes to a personal pronoun. And the reason is because they're interchangeable, because there's one, one is controlling the other. The beast in some parts is spoken of as, as this person who's the Antichrist. In other contexts, it talks about it as a, as a superpower of nations. But they are so part of each other that you can use them almost interchangeably. You follow me on that? All right, now, clearly, when it talks about, uh, in verse 2, where it says, the dragon gave him his power, his throne, and great authority. So this is talking about giving all of Satan's power and authority to this man. And the implications of that are mind-boggling. I mean, you can't imagine what this is saying. This is talking about a man that's going to have all of the power of the highest created being God ever created handed to him. We're talking about ten heads that represent ten nations here, okay? And so uh, this person, and, and here again, Sometimes this wounded head is talking about a a power, a nation, and other times it's talking about the individual who personifies that nation. And it rocks back and forth. And he says, And I saw one of his heads as if it had been slain, and his fatal wound was healed. And the whole earth was amazed and followed after the beast. They worshiped the dragon because he gave his authority to the beast, And they worshiped the beast, saying, Who is like the beast? 
Who is able to wage war with him? See, we're back to personal pronoun again. All right, now, <laughs> does it uh, make you a little frightened to know that we are very close to having a world of Satan worshipers? Because that's what it's saying here. Now, they're not aware they're worshiping Satan because Satan is inside this man. But the man is totally animated and empowered by Satan. And there's complete deception. And they worship this person. In verse 5, there was given to him a mouth speaking arrogant words and blasphemies. An authority to act for 42 months was given to him. And he opened his mouth in blasphemies against God to blaspheme his name and his tabernacle. That is, or I mean by that, those who dwell in heaven. Now, why would he do that? Why would he find it necessary to take his valuable airtime to blaspheme God and those who dwell in heaven? Well, because he has to explain where you and I vanished to. The whole world's going to wonder what happened. All these people disappeared. And he's going to come in with an ex explanation. He's going to blaspheme God. He's going to blaspheme us. We're in heaven. Well, let's read on. And it was also given to him to make war with the saints and overcome them, and authority over every tribe and people and tongue and nation was given to him. You see, God allowed the only world superpowers there's ever been here since the flood. And the first one was Babylon, second, Media Persia, third, Greece, the fourth, Rome, phase one, and this is Rome, phase two, because it's going to be a resurrected form of Rome. So, see, there are not five superpowers here that God allows out of the Gentile world. Only four, but the fourth one is in two phases. And the fourth one is the only one that is not conquered. You see, Babylon was conquered by Media Persia. Media Persia was conquered by the Greek Macedonians, Alexander the Great. The Greek Empire was conquered by Rome. But Rome was never conquered. It fell apart from its own decadence from within. But it continued to exist in mystery form. Its spiritual moorings continued to exist. And it is out of that spiritual form that's called the whore of Babylon that it will emerge again. The important thing I want you to see is this is the first of all of those world superpowers that actually does, in fact, control every person on the earth. Before it was in God's, in, in God's authority and view, they controlled everything that was worth controlling. They were the superpower of the world, even though Babylon didn't control China. But in God's, in God's view, Babylon was a superpower. Okay, when interpreters of this passage tried to tried to apply it to the world of their day, there's no way they could see how that could be. They said this must not be literal. It was because that the incredible technology of our day didn't exist, but today it does exist, and what we see is an irresistible force moving the economy more and more to a centralization under one unit. And what is happening right now is just moving into high gear to, to put everyone under a centralized control. And money is being centralized. Money is, I don't believe there's going to be any cash currency very much longer. 
all who dwell on the earth will worship him, the Antichrist, everyone whose name has not been written from the foundation of the world in the book of life of the Lamb who, was, who, has, who has been slain. In other words, everyone who is not going to be saved. If anyone has an ear, let him hear. If anyone is destined for captivity, to captivity he goes. If anyone kills with a sword, with a sword he, he must be killed. Here is the perseverance of the faith of the saints. And this is in, uh, in essence saying, that if you believe in Jesus Christ during this time, you know you will probably be martyred. And almost everyone will be. There'll be only a, a, a small percentage of the world's population that will survive as believers from the tribulation, the seven-year period here. Then I saw another beast coming up out of the earth, and he had two horns like a lamb, but he spoke as a dragon. Now notice, he comes up not out of the sea, but out of the land, tes geis in Greek. And when that's used in the book of Revelation, it always refers to not the earth in general, the land refers to the land of Israel. So this is one that's going to come up out of Israel. Now, this one comes up. And he speaks as a dragon, so that means Satan also gives him power. He exercises all the authority of the first beast, the Antichrist from Rome, in his presence. He makes the earth and those who dwell on it or in it to worship the first beast whose fatal wound was healed. So this one points the world. He's kind of like a satanic John the Baptist. He points the world to worship this Roman. Now, it says he performs great signs so that he even makes fire come down out of heaven to the earth in the presence of men. You see, Satan is able to work miracles. Not fake miracles, real miracles. He has that power. All he needs to use it is for God to let him, and God's going to turn him loose during this period. Verse 14, and he deceives those who dwell on the earth because of the signs which it was given him to perform in the presence of the Antichrist of Rome, telling those who dwell on the earth to make an image to the Antichrist who had the wound of the sword and has come to life. Now, obviously, this, per this is a person, a real person, because he's, it says he, as an individual, is wounded with a sword, mortally, and he comes back to life. And it was given to him to give breath to the image of the beast. So they're going to make some sort of a uh, life-size statue of this thing that will actually assume lifelike characteristics and speak. So that the image of the beast would even speak and cause as many as do not worship the image of the beast to be killed. And he causes all the small and the great and the rich and the poor and the free men and the slaves to be given a mark on their right hand or on their forehead. And he provides that no one will be able to buy or to sell except the one who has the mark, either the name of the beast or the number of his name. Now, the relationship between verse 15 and 16 is very important. You see... If you don't worship the Roman Antichrist and his image, you don't get the mark. You've got to worship him to get the mark. If you don't take the mark, if, or I should say, if you don't worship and then get the mark, then you can't buy or sell. And this means the whole world, each individual. In other words, the Antichrist will have at his control the monetary system in such a way that he can control down to each individual on this planet whether they can buy or sell. Now, that would have been totally impossible before the last 10 years or so. 
But today, child's play. And when it says they'll receive the mark of the beast on the, for, on the hand or on the forehead, this is talking about the number of his name, which is 666. And it says in verse 18, here's wisdom. Let him who has understanding calculate the number of the beast, for the number is that of a man, and his number is 666. So the mark, I believe, will be a computer chip. It will be either put into the hand or in the forehead. And it will not have to be uh, large at all. I mean, this a chip uh, that can carry your whole personal dossier doesn't have to be much bigger than the head of a pen. And uh, each person will be with this chip, which is linked to satellites, so that wherever you are, you can't buy or sell unless you have the number of the beast. And what is that number? 666. Well, how is that going to be individualized? Well, you see, every person will have a personal number. And when you swear allegiance to the Antichrist, then they will put a prefix to your personal number of 666, which means once the computer scans it, 666 shows, okay, the number's all right. And so your personal number is okay to buy or sell. Now, that will establish total control of every human being. Never been possible before, but it is now. And that, the apparatus and architecture for that is being set up right before our eyes. Every day I read something more that shows me that it's moving that way. Every day. Just watch. There'll be more crises, which will make people even more afraid, which will make them gladly throw things into a tighter and tighter, more centralized power. Now, everybody thinks there is something magical about 666. It's not. And even if you had tattooed on your hand right now, 666, that's not the mark of the beast. Or if you had, a, you know, some kind of a chip put there on your forehead, that's not it. What is going to have to be watched is this. The only way you can buy or sell is to worship the beast then you're given the mark. And what is the purpose of the mark? It's to show on some kind of worldwide network where you can be tracked that you have been authorized and qualified to buy and sell. And literally every person on this planet is going to have that. Think of the control that's involved here. When I first started talking about, I remember Chuck Missler and I were fooling around with computers and stuff. This was 35 years ago. At that time, it would have taken, you know, a whole building to hold the computers, and then you couldn't cool them enough for one that was big enough at that time to have all the names of everybody on earth and have a dossier on them and so forth and know what they were doing at any given time. And it was just virtually impossible. Today... My desktop could do it, almost. And uh, so what this is saying, and it gives us a hint. You know, the Holy Spirit only gives us a hint here, a hint there. And the events that are close to the time this is all going to happen, all these signs are going to be made clear to those who are believers and guided by the Holy Spirit. That's the only time we would understand the implications of what he's saying here. And I believe what this is saying is this, that there's going to be a global economic crisis. And that's why people are so anxious. He is given the power to make war, but it doesn't say he makes war. It's the threat of war. 
so he can consolidate his power. And what's going to happen, I believe, is simply 666. How could that be an identification to show that you're qualified to buy or sell? You see, everybody in the world, almost everybody, has some kind of a personal number. Here in the United States, it's Social Security number. But there are other, in other nations, they have certain identity numbers for each individual nowadays. And what will be added as a prefix is 666. That prefix on your personal number will show that you have been activated to be able to buy, sell, and, and have commerce and job in the world. And I believe that is what is being set up right now. I mean, we had to have computers strong enough to do what do this. I mean, it could never have been done before now. The Holy Spirit predicted it 2,000 years ago. But today is the first general time when anything like this could have been done. Especially with the fact that the Holy Spirit also knew there was going to be a tremendous population explosion because today, listen, when I, was, uh, when I was born, there were 2 billion people in the world. 1930 was 2 billion. We are now 6.5 billion. So the problem is greatly multiplied to keep track of all those people. Well, we've got computers to do it now. We've got chips. Everything's been miniaturized. Uh, they, they can be a tiny chip put in your hand that can tell... Uh, you know, a scanner can tell all about you. They can tell your whole record, your credit record, your medical record, everything. They can read it from a satellite. And no one's going to be, uh, no one's going to want to be left out of this. So there'll be a choice. God is rigging this thing so there's going to be a choice that everybody's going to have to clearly make in that horrible time of the tribulation. People are going to have to make a choice to worship Satan in the Antichrist. And if they do, they're going to get the mark. And if you get a mark, you can never be saved. But why? Because you've chosen to worship Satan. Who is the only one that would have the motivation and the inner strength to turn it down? That's right, a believer. And there will be believers all over the place in the tribulation. And I believe that's what's being set up right now. All the dynamics that, listen, what's going on right now is helping to further finalize the setting up of a global economic system that now has the technical needs furnished to establish control over every person on earth. And I have read articles by various members of the money trust that controls the Federal Reserve that shows that they absolutely are for one world government. And they believe that uh, through their great intelligence, they have the best solution for the world to live in peace. And, uh, you know, that therefore they should be in charge. I don't know if you're reading me or not, but I'm telling you, we are close. We are close. Praise God. I mean, people see me get all excited when there's absolute disaster going around. <laughs> Praise the Lord, there's another sign. <laughs> uh, here, listen to that idiot. But when you know where you're going, and you know what's happening, then you should not, I'm telling you, some hard times are here, hard times are coming, don't be afraid because it just means we're that closer to seeing Jesus. Join us next week for How Lindsay 
the Bible Prophecy Series, The Coming of the Last World Superpower. But when you really get a grip on the fact that Jesus so saves you, when you simply admit your sins and receive the gift of pardon, that you are already in heaven as far as he's concerned. You can find more of Hal Lindsey at his website, www.howlindsey.com. There you can access our video and article archives. Visit our online store for Hal Lindsey CDs, books, and other specialty items. Folks, I'm excited to tell you about my latest teaching resource that will help you in your walk with Christ. It's my popular series on the book of Romans. I believe this set of 48 audio CDs presents the most extensive study you'll find on one of the most important books in the Bible. In this series, I teach before a live audience. I go chapter by chapter, chapters one through five, spelling out the teaching of salvation. Chapters six through eight, explain the indwelling of the Holy Spirit and His empowering the Christian life and how we can depend upon the Holy Spirit. Then chapter 9 is Israel being accepted. Chapter 10 is why Israel is now rejected. Chapter 11 is how Israel will be accepted after the church is taken in the rapture and why. Chapters 12 through 16 are various exhortations on how to live the Christian life through the Holy Spirit. This magnificent book teaches us how the Holy Spirit will work in us to help us grow spiritually, and so much more. Hal Lindsey's Book of Romans audio CD series is now available for $190 plus shipping and handling. You can order your Book of Romans CD series by writing to Hal Lindsey Media Ministries, P.O. Box 470-470, Tulsa, Oklahoma, 74147. You can also place your order by phoning 1-888-RAPTURE or by visiting the online store at hallindsey.com. Order your set today and begin a life-changing journey with one of the greatest spiritual roadmaps the Bible offers, the book Romans. To support this program, send your tax-deductible gift to Hal Lindsey Media Ministries, P.O. Box 470470, Tulsa, Oklahoma, 74147. You can also support this ministry online. Visit howlindsey.com or call 1-888-RAPTURE.